the 18 electron rule. The 18 electron rule is something that we can use for um, organometallic compounds or coordination compounds that are in the D block or transition metal uh, block. Now we might be familiar with the octet rule, which would be eight electrons. But now that we have the D block available to us, that can add 10 more spots for electrons. So eight plus 10, 18 electron rule. So let's just go over some examples. And I've written one here that would follow the octet rule, just as a reminder of how that is working. And we can use this as an illustration for how we're gonna count electrons. So we have carbon and carbon has four electrons and we have four hydrogens and each one of those had one electron so four times once four electrons and if we add those up that's eight electrons and carbon likes to obey the octet rule now, when we start talking about coordination complexes, we can add more electrons to that. So here we have a rhenium hydride anion because it's negatively charged. And so let's do a little electron counting with this. So if we look at the periodic table, we'll notice that rhenium has seven electrons to it. And then our hydrogens are each going to bring in one electron a piece. So that's nine electrons. And then this entire complex is negatively charged. So there's two negative charges. So there must be two additional electrons on the complex. So plus two electrons for the charge. So seven plus nine plus two is 18 electrons. Now let's look down here at this uh, hexachlorocobaltate anion. So if we look at this, we'll see that cobalt is a plus three charge, right? Because each chloride is a minus one. The entire complex is minus three, so the cobalt must be plus three. Now, just as a quick review, if we have cobalt zero, no charge on it, uh, that electron configuration is 4s2, 3d7. So if we take away three electrons from that, there will be two electrons gone from the 4s because it's the outer shell, and we'll have to take one from the d orbital. So that will convert this cobalt three plus into three d six, or since we're just counting electrons, six electrons. That's really what we were after. So cobalt three plus, that is six electrons. Now we have six chlorides. Now when the chloride is bonding to the metal, it's using two electrons for every chloride. So this is actually 12 electrons right here. And there are different ways of counting this. Up here, we used a more covalent way of counting. Down here, we're using an ionic way of counting. But both are valid and both give the same result. So six plus 12, it, surprise, 18 electrons. 
all of the examples that I've chosen should be 18 electrons. This is again cobalt 3 plus and again this ligand right here is a neutral one ammonia it's giving two electrons apiece so this is exactly the same as as the one over here it's just that the ligand is not charged so this is hexaamine cobalt 3 plus and in this case we have cobalt 3 plus giving us six electrons and then our six amines it's going to give us 12 which again it's 18. and it's not necessarily the case that every complex would follow the 18 electron rule but they often do and it is very uncommon for us to have an electron count that goes beyond 18. So that's something to keep in mind. It, it does happen, but it's very rare with the transition metal elements.